Now, can I ask you, where did the idea for this book come from? I mean, there are plenty of them out there. What makes this one different? Well, there are many books about the styles and architecture of St. McCartan's Cathedral, and Bishop Joseph Duffy himself has done a very detailed study of the stained glass windows in the cathedral. But I was both humbled and honoured when he asked me if I would put my thoughts together on the different aspects of the building. I thought about it for some weeks. I walked around the building many times, both inside and outside, and then I decided that the best approach would be photographs and text. So I approached a photographer whom I know very well, Ken Doyle. Actually, he's married to a cousin of mine. And he agreed to come with me to the cathedral on a number of occasions. We did it very, very, very carefully. And we listed all the things we wanted to mention in the book. And then we began. Bishop Duffy, of course, was a great help. He answered any questions I had, and he helped me with the text. And there are many other uh, helpers, too many to mention here. But thankfully, as the months went by, the book came together. And yes, it has created quite a bit of an interest in the locality. What can a reader look forward to when opening this book? The book begins with an outline of the early history of the building of St. Carton's Cathedral. Then it moves quickly on to the artefacts to be found in the building itself and the artists who designed them and where most of them came from. A study of the stained glass windows has been done already by Bishop Joseph Duffy, so we just picked three of the stained glass windows to put into our publication. We moved on quickly then to the exterior of the building, and with the help of Mac decorators, Pat McKenna, Emmy Vale, we got unusually high pictures of the statuary on the outside of the building, as well as the building itself. I would like to think that some of the pictures we have taken are unique and will be of added interest to anyone who has a copy of the book. I'm sure while writing this book it was an experience for yourself and I'm sure you learnt a lesson or two as well. Are there any particular artefacts that stood out to you or any particular memories from writing this book that would stand out? Well, in my opinion, the tapestries behind the main altar in the sanctuary by Francis Biggs are a focal point on entering the cathedral. Then being from the parish of Tidavnet myself in North Monaghan, the St. Dimpna window which tells the story of the saint was of special interest to me. The organ and organ gallery and the rose window above are also of special interest when viewed from the altar area of the cathedral. And the organ was made by Telford and Telford, London, and was restored in the 70s and is one of the finest examples of their work in this country at the present time. What sort of interest has been generated by this book? What kind of people are looking for a copy? Well, the Christmas sales probably the usual Christmas present for Granny and Granda, and maybe Mammy and Daddy, or Uncle and Auntie. Other people buy it to send it as a present to people living in another country. And recently there has been an interest shown from schools and from parishes throughout the diocese, because the references to the confirmation ceremony the blessing of the Holy Oils on Holy Thursday is a very useful educational uh, aid, especially to teachers with the confirmation class in primary schools and also to students in the secondary level who are doing projects on 
architecture or buildings or anything in that area for part of their examination. For someone living overseas, perhaps in, in one of the other continents, how would they go about getting one of these books and how valuable would they be to them? Well, anyone with a Monaghan connection would recognise instantly some of the things they would remember from their young days, maybe visiting the cathedral or being there for different ceremonies. And it could bring back memories to many, no matter what part of the world they were, they were really residing in at the minute.